Hey guys, welcome to Megan Grace DIY. This video is the first video in a three-part series on making a simple, fun holiday dress. In part one, we're gonna go through all of our pattern pieces and we're gonna pin together the shell of the dress. Part two, we're gonna put together the dress and the lining and part three will be all the finishing techniques. Let's get started by taking a look at our pattern. We'll be using the McCall's pattern M7802, which has a bunch of cute little options. I'm gonna be making dress B. So to get started, we're gonna look at the tab and compare our own measurements to the chart to decide what size we should be making. If this is your first time working with a commercial pattern, it's important to know that the sizing runs quite different than street sizing. I commonly wear a size 10 or 12, and in this pattern, I'm a size 20. So don't freak out if you measure a little bit of a bigger size than you usually wear. Once you've determined your size, you're gonna to go to the secondary chart and find your size and the style of dress you want to make. And then it'll tell you how much fabric you need in either 60 inches wide or 45 inches wide. And then there's also other information that you might need like the notions or what type of fabric works best with this pattern. Every commercial pattern comes with directions where it'll show you the flat of the styles that come in the pattern and I'm doing dress B and then it will show you all the pattern pieces that come in this pattern. Then you'll go down the list and figure out exactly which numbers you need to complete the style you want. So I just wanna make a quick note on patterns while I grab a pen to circle which pattern pieces we're gonna cut out. Um, I have my master's in education and while I was getting my master's, one of my courses was in reading and teaching reading and reading education levels. And one of the things I learned is the most difficult type of reading anyone can try to do is reading directions to build or make something. So if you get confused while you're reading pattern directions, don't feel bad. It's literally one of the hardest things you could try to read. To make dress B, we're gonna use pattern pieces one through nine. Pieces 10 and 11 are for a different type of bodice, which if you wanna make that dress instead, please go ahead. Another important piece of information on this page of the directions is it gives you a cutting guide as to how to lay out your pattern pieces to make the best use of the fabric that you buy. Here are all the supplies to make dress B. My shell fabric is this awesome Art Deco gold glitter fabric that has a little bit of a stretch to it and I thought it'd be perfect for New Year's. I also have a black lining fabric with an equal amount of stretch. The pattern also calls for a 22 inch invisible zipper, but I'm gonna do a centered zipper instead. I also have some interfacing and the pattern that I need. You wanna make sure that you have plenty of matching thread. And lastly, I've got my lint roller just because this glitter tends to get everywhere, so I clean off my ironing board as I go. I mean, this glitter really does get everywhere. I went out to dinner last night with my boyfriend and I looked and he had some on his face. <laughs> Now I'm gonna take you through each pattern piece. This is piece two, which is the front of our bodice. We're gonna cut one of our shell fabric on the fold, and we're also gonna cut one in our lining, also on the fold. You wanna cut it on the fold so it unfolds into one full piece and you don't have a seam going down the front of your bodice. Also make sure to mark all notches that are on the pattern. At the bottom of this piece, we have little dots that indicate where you're gonna gather to make this fit your bust line. Moving along to piece one, this is the back of our bodice. We're gonna cut this the same way as we cut the front of the bodice, having one layer cut in the shell and one layer cut in the lining. The only difference is that that center back seam does not need to be cut on the fold because that's where our zipper is going to end up. And once again, don't forget to mark your notches. I mark my notches by just putting a little snip in the fabric with my scissors, but do it whichever way you feel is best. Tailor chalk, tracing paper, and pins work equally as well. Moving on to pieces three and four, these two pieces together create the midriff panel of the dress. So basically the piece that ends up between the top of the dress and the skirt. This is another part of the dress that I'm going to line. So I've cut one piece for the shell and one piece for the lining. This is also a place where you could use interfacing if you're using a lighter weight fabric. Both of my fabrics are pretty heavy and have some stretch to them. So I'm opting not to use interfacing here. And just a reminder, since piece four is the front of the dress, it's going to be cut on fold for both pieces that you cut. Not cutting on the fold is one of the most common mistakes I see beginner sewers make. So make sure you look for that bent arrow that says cut on fold so you don't make this mistake. 
Piece five is our sleeve. It's a beautiful, long, bell-shaped sleeve. I've cut two of my shell fabric for this piece, and this piece does not require a lining. Now, you know me, I like to make little small alterations here and there, so I'll also be adding a cuff to the wrist. I'm gonna cut my own pattern for the cuff, which I'll show you later in the video, and I'll end up gathering in that bell shape to the cuff. Now let's look at the pieces for our skirt. This skirt is known as a gourd skirt, which is when you take several pieces and sew them together to create the skirt, unlike a circle skirt, which is all one piece. Piece eight is the center back of our dress. The center back seam will be where our zipper goes through. I'm not lining my skirt because again, this is a little bit of a heavier fabric, so I've only cut two of the shell. Some people do need to cut a lining for this though, especially if you're using a lighter colored fabric or a thinner fabric. Here we see piece nine, which is the side back of our skirt. I've only cut two of my shell fabric because again, I'm choosing not to line the skirt. Here's where marking your notches comes in very, very important play. When you're sewing together a gourd skirt, it's very easy to switch pieces and put them on the wrong sides, but the gores are built to shape your body. So you wanna make sure that you're matching the correct piece to the correct piece. Piece seven is the side front of our skirt, and piece six is the center front of our skirt. And what do we know about anything that's center front? It's almost always cut on the fold. So this piece, we don't cut two pieces of it, but we cut one piece on the fold. So it unfolds into one larger piece and we don't have a seam going down the front of our garment. And lastly, here's the pieces that I cut for my cuff. I measured my wrist and I added an inch for seam allowance. And I decided I wanted my cuff to be about four and a half inches long. So I've cut two pieces of the shell as well as two pieces of the lining. I wouldn't wanna line this with the glitter fabric cause it could be very irritating to the skin. Now there's a couple ways to attack the construction of this dress. What I'm gonna do with you guys is I'm gonna take you through pinning as many seams together as we can before we sit down at the sewing machine. Now I believe this method makes things go a little bit faster but just be prepared right now, we're gonna do a lot of pinning. Just a quick reminder here that we're looking for the dots on our front piece of our bodice. We're gonna gather between those dots, so make sure you mark them. I'm gonna go through this piece with my scissors and mark all of my notches as I'm gonna do with all the rest of my pieces. Another way to mark notches that's very popular in the sewing community that I haven't mentioned before is when you get to the notch when you're cutting, actually cutting an arrow outward instead of cutting into the fabric itself. Now that I've got my pattern pieces removed and all my notches marked, we're gonna work on pinning together the front of the bodice with the two back pieces. And I'm gonna start with the shell first and put my lining to the side for now. So here I'm looking at the front of our bodice unfolded. And we're gonna take both of the pieces of the back of the bodice and line them up at the shoulder seams and the side seams. We wanna have our two prints touching each other as we sew. So that way the prints are on the outside of the garment. When pinning a garment together, use as many pins as you feel you need for that seam. I usually use two to three pins for a seam, unless it's a very long seam, I'll use more. Now that we're moving onto the shoulder seam, I need to explain the concept of easing. If you followed my shirt tutorial, we did a little bit of easing in that video too. Easing is basically when one piece of the fabric is a bit longer than the other piece and you need to stretch the shorter piece to fit the longer piece. So you might be wondering, what's the point of this? Why not just make the two seams even? Well, in this case, in the shoulder area, we need a little bit of extra fabric in the back to accommodate for our back muscles and allow our arms to move freely. So we put just a sheer amount of extra fabric on the back seam and we stretch our front seam to fit the back seam. There should be no gathering once your seam is finished. Now my fabric is stretchy, so it makes it a lot easier to ease it in, but if you have fabric that's not stretchy, doing the easing here might be a little bit more difficult. Now that our bodice is all pinned together, we can put this over the sewing machine where we're gonna sew both our side seams and our top shoulder seams. I'm gonna speed this part up a bit, but we're gonna basically repeat the steps we just did with our lining. We're gonna put together our shoulder seams and our side seams, and the same easing is gonna occur at the shoulders. 
if your lining has a right and a wrong side, you want to make sure that the right sides are touching each other and on the part that we see right now, it's the wrong side. But most linings don't have a right or a wrong side. And once you've finished pinning, you can put this by the sewing machine, ready to sew the shoulder seams and the side seams. Now moving along to pieces three and four, which create the midriff of the dress, we're gonna follow a very similar pattern. We're gonna pin together the side seams of the shell of the dress, and then we're gonna pin together the side seams of the lining of the dress. I'm gonna switch the orientation of the pieces to horizontal versus vertical, because I want you to see how the pieces will be on the human body. I feel like that makes it a bit easier to conceptualize how the whole dress goes together, versus me keeping the pieces on a vertical plane. And don't forget to mark your notches. You're gonna need them here. The reason we need our notches when we're putting these pieces together is because one side of the back piece is the center back, it's straighter, and that's where our zipper will go. The other side of the back piece is also straight, but does have a slight angle to it. So the piece with the angle, or the piece with the notch in it, is the piece that gets lined up on the edge of the midriff front. I know this may seem like such a small detail, but I can tell you from experience that a quarter of an inch off in a seam or a curve can make the biggest difference between a garment laying perfectly on the body and a garment just not quite looking right. So you wanna make sure that you get all your seams perfectly attached. And once you've got both your side seams pinned, you can place it over onto your sewing table with your bodice when we're ready to go to the machine and sew all our straight stitches. So here I am with the lining pieces of the midriff. I'm pinning it together at the side seams and they'll get sewn together at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Just reminding here, because I mentioned it once before, that this part of the dress, if you were using a thinner fabric, should be interfaced. And your interfacing always touches your body, so it's on the lining piece, not on the shell piece. Now that we're done with our midriff, we're going to move on to the skirt. I'm just going to prepare you right now. There's a lot of pinning in this section. We have about seven seams to put together in our gourd skirt, so you will need quite a few pins on hand to pin the entire skirt together. And I know my patterns, again, look a little on the haggard side. I left them alone for five minutes, and then, of course, you know who got to them. So I'm starting with piece eight, which is the center of the back. I'm gonna open up this piece so the print is facing upward. The straight middle opening that's created by opening up this pattern piece is our center back seam. And for the sake of pinning for right now, we're gonna leave that open because we'll close it later when we go to put our zipper in. Now I'm taking piece nine, which is the side back of the skirt, and I'm lining them up on the appropriate sides. This is where those notches are really important because the shapes could very easily be flipped to the other side. And trust me, I've done that before. So you wanna make sure that you line up the notches that are on the appropriate side so the right seams get sewn together. I'm going to speed this part up, of course, because I trust that you know how to pin your pattern pieces together. But once you've lined up the appropriate notches, make sure your fabric is 100% even and put as many pins in place as you need to hold the pieces together. And this is me pinning the other side of the side back of the skirt together with the center back of the skirt. Again, I'm not using a lining in my skirt, so I don't need to do this a second time. But if you have a lighter fabric, I recommend using a lining and you would just repeat this process again. Once we finish pinning those two seams, I'm going to gently fold back the side back of the skirt to prepare to sew on the side front of the skirt. Now, if you're still in the beginner stages and you don't really feel comfortable with moving on to pinning another seam at this point, please go to the machine and sew the seam and then go back to pinning. That's completely up to you. I just do it this way because it's easier and faster for me to do all my pinning at once and then sit at the machine and get all my straight stitching done at once. The side front of our skirt is piece seven. And again, we have to line up the appropriate notches to make sure that we're putting the right piece on the right side of the garment. See there, I almost accidentally put the left panel of the garment on the right side of the dress, but I made sure to check my notches and realize my mistake before I had sewn the pieces together. And once all your pinning is completed for this side, you can unfold the garment and see that you've got one, two, and three panels of your skirt pinned together. 
Now, hopefully you've realized at this point in time, because we have another side to the skirt, we're gonna repeat. The smaller piece is the center back and the larger piece is the side back. So now we're attaching the side front to the side back and we're gonna put pins all the way down this seam. Now that we've got both side fronts pinned into the skirt, we're ready for the final piece, which is pinning both sides to the center front. Hopefully you can see the way I've arranged both sides on the table, so I leave an open spot for P6 or center front. I took my open P6 and I flipped it towards the part of the skirt that's at the upper part of the screen, and I'm pinning that one side together, and then what I'll do once that's done is flip it backwards, and then take the other side of the skirt and flip it on top. Again, so our outer pieces of the fabric are always touching each other. Now, if you're very gentle at this point, making sure not to stick yourself with any pins, you can actually hold up the whole skirt and see how it looks all pinned together. After that, it's gonna go over into our pile of all the things that need to be sewn together. And our last thing we have to pin together is our two sleeves. We also have the cuffs, but I'm gonna save those for later in the video since they're gonna require a special application. Starting with one sleeve, we're gonna fold it in half and match up the two under seams together. The curves may seem a slight bit different along this seam. Don't worry about that. That's to create this bell shape that the dress is kind of known for. Also, if you're looking at the hem of the sleeve on the right side of the screen, you're like, wait a second, those two things do not line up. Again, it's created that way, so we have this beautiful bell shape. And when I add on my little cuff at the end, it's gonna create a really cool ballooning hem effect. Once we're done with sleeve one, we're gonna move on to pinning together sleeve two. And it's done the exact same way as we did on sleeve one. Once you're done pinning it all together, it's ready to be put onto our pile of things to be sewn. And we will be moving on to the sewing step after pinning this sleeve. Now that we're finally at the sewing part, I am gonna point out every piece that we need to sew together, but some I'm gonna speed up. I might go through them just a little bit, couple of seconds and put a caption on the screen as to what part of the garment it is. Just because at this point, I'm assuming that most of you know how to sew a straight line. And if you are a very new sewer and have not sewn a straight line before, you can go ahead, click on the link above and it takes you through how to sew a straight line on a sewing machine, nice and slow and teaches you the proper way. Right now you're watching me sew the seams on the lining of the bodice. And just a reminder that throughout all the seams we're gonna sew right now, they're on a stitch length of three, it's a straight stitch and you're sewing on a 5 8 seam allowance. Every single commercial pattern is a 5 8 seam allowance. Here I am up at the shoulder seam where we have that little bit of easing that's gonna come into play. I'm gonna make sure I take out my pins before I sew across them, and I'm just gonna gently pull the shorter side of the fabric to fit the longer side. I don't want any kind of gathering or puckering showing. I'm just making sure that by pulling gently, both sides of the fabric fit together. Just one more example, you can see here how I've got that little gapping extra bit of fabric and I'm gonna stretch my top layer to fit my bottom layer. After I completed all four seams in the lining of the bodice, the two shoulders and the two side seams, I'm ready to move on to my shell. I'm gonna do the same exact seams, my two shoulder seams and my two side seams. And we still have to perform our easing at the shoulder seams of the outside of the dress. Once all four seams of the inside of the bodice and the outside of the bodice are sewn together, we're ready to move on to our midriff pieces, which should be relatively simple. You're gonna have your lining layer and your shell layer or outside layer, and there's two side seams. And once those two side seams are sewn, you are done with both your midriff layers. Now that you've completed the midriff, it's time to move on to your sleeve pieces. You're gonna sew one long seam down the underside of the sleeve, and you're gonna do this for both sleeves. Reminder again, you're sewing at a stitch length of three with a seam allowance of five eighths. And once you've got the seam of one sleeve done, you're ready to move on to the second sleeve. 
Once you're done sewing the second sleeve, they can both be placed on the ironing board for the pressing step. And now we're ready to move on to the marathon of seams that will be sewing our skirt together. We have six straight seams to sew, not including our back center seam. You don't have to sew the seams in any particular order. All I want you to do is make sure you're on that 5 8 seam allowance and that your stitch length is at the appropriate length. When you're done with this seam, feel free to move on to any one of the next five. And here I am sewing the last bit of my last skirt seam. Once all of your straight seams are sewed, you're gonna meet me back at the ironing board for one heck of an ironing party. I'm gonna start with pressing out all of the seams on our skirt, since that's the most amount of pressing we'll do. Anytime you're working with a new fabric or a novelty fabric, it's always a great idea to do a little test corner to see how the fabric reacts to your iron. Especially when you get into polyesters, if your iron is too high, it could possibly melt your fabric. Luckily, the fabric I chose presses up beautifully and gives me a nice flat seam. I'm also gonna recommend searching your fabric to see what kind of steam it handles the most. I personally love to press with a lot of steam, but there are certain fabrics like organzas or seersucker that you absolutely cannot use steam on or else it'll ruin the fabric. So that's another good piece of information to know before you start pressing your garment. Now, because I'm not lining the skirt, I need to apply a seam finish to each of my seams. So what I'll end up doing after everything is pressed is cutting all of my seam allowance down to a little over a quarter of an inch, three eighths of an inch, and apply a zigzag seam down each one of these seams. With the skirt seams all pressed, it's time to move on to pressing our bodice. Now remember, we had four seams in each part of our bodice, the lining and the shell. So make your way through all eight seams in the top of the dress, pressing them open and flat. I don't have you complete the gathering at this point in time because I'm gonna have you gather both the lining and the shell together. This type of gathering isn't really meant to create poof in the garment, which would happen if we gathered the layers separately, but when we gather the layers together, they're gonna act more as a fitting tool for the garment, which is what we want. After completing my bodice, I'm gonna move on to the two midriff pieces, which will be fairly easy to press since they only have two seams each. But whether you've got two seams or 12 seams or 200 seams, all your seams need to be pressed and clean and look nice and flat from the outside. There's simply nothing better than a freshly pressed garment. Typically when we press a sleeve seam open, we use something called a sleeve board. And the reason we use a sleeve board is to lift up the seam and not make any kind of creases in the sides of the sleeve. Not having a sleeve board in this situation is not really that big of a deal because the sleeve is so wide. So I can press that seam open and flat without accidentally pressing some folded seams into the top or the bottom of the sleeve. Now, before we move on to the final step of this video, I have a very important announcement to make. Over this weekend on December 6th, I finally hit a huge goal I've been trying to hit for a long time, which was 10,000 subscribers. And I wanna take a moment to thank every single one of you. It means the absolute world to me that I have that many people supporting my channel. Now, along with this achievement, comes a very important announcement as to the winner of the 10,000K subscriber giveaway new sewing machine. And the winner is Paper Airplane Thrifts. Definitely check her out on Instagram. This young lady has created a business by buying thrifted items and reselling them at a low cost. Since we have such a big issue with fast fashion and I do a whole unit on this in my introduction to the fashion industry course, I find it so important that we have young people supporting thrifting items. And one of the things she's been wanting is a sewing machine so she could start altering her thrifted items as well. So congratulations on being the 10,000 subscriber winner and keep your eyes peeled for the next contest, which will probably be somewhere around 15K. 
Now, what we're gonna do as our final step in today's video is apply seam finishes to the seams in the sleeves and the seams in the skirts. I like to use a zigzag seam finish, which I'll put a link above if you'd like to check that out, but you're really open to use any kind of seam finish you want. If you have a serger, use a serger. If you wanna do a Hong Kong finish, do a Hong Kong finish. Do whatever makes you happy to make the inside of your garment look beautiful. And once I'm done finishing up this seam, I'm gonna hold up a close up of what that zigzag seam finish should look like when you're done. Last step in today's video is we're gonna also apply a seam finish to all six seams in the skirt. Now, I don't think you need to watch me sew a seam finish on all six seams, given that it's the same exact steps as you just saw with the sleeve. So we're just gonna do a really quick little montage to wrap this video up. To finish up this video, I took the pieces we've created so far and I've pinned them to my dress form. Keep in mind I'm a size 20 and my dress form is a size 8, so I did my best to make it fit and still look like what our final product is going to be in the end. I'm pretty excited. I think it's going to look awesome. So that completes part one of our holiday dress series. Part two will be constructing the garment and in part three we'll be doing all the finishing techniques. So this is the part where I say thank you for stopping by my channel. I really do appreciate it. And if you like the content that you see, please feel free to hit the subscribe and the notify button. You can always check me out on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. And if you're looking for some fun holiday gifts, I've also got an Etsy store. And it's under the same name, Megan Grace DIY. So thanks for stopping by. And as always, happy sewing.